Hello everybody. Today we're going to review describing data. So it's all about statistics. It says create a dot plot for the time and minutes it took students to complete an activity. So we're going to have one dot at one, one data point at two, two at three, three at four, two at five, three at six, one at seven, two at nine, and one at 10. This is a dot plot. You wanna have your dots to be all about the same size and you want each row to be consistent. So I really should um, fix these two here to move down that first one a little bit to make that more line up better with the other ones. For dot plots, you always want to make sure your data is given to you in order. If your data is in order like it is for us here, we can go ahead and identify the different statistics. So my minimum value is 3 and my maximum value is 20. My median Q2, well, I'm just gonna cross off until I get to the middle. And so my middle value is 10, so my median is 10. And then Q1 is the middle of my first half, so that's gonna be five. And Q3 is the middle of my second half, so that's gonna be 14. The IQR is the inner quartile range, and that's Q3 minus Q1. So here, 14 minus 5 is 9. Your range is your maximum value minus your minimum value. So in this problem, that's going to be 20 minus 3, which is 17. To check to see if you have any outliers, you want to use the outlier formulas. So you will have an outlier if there is a data value below Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. And so in this problem, that would be 5 minus 1.5 times 9. So in my calculator, I'm just going to go ahead and do that and I get negative 8.5. None of these data values are below negative 8.5, so I do not have an outlier that is below. Let's check to see if we have an outlier that is above. You will have an outlier if you have a data value that is above Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. So in this example, that's going to be 14 plus 1.5 times 9. And when I do that in my calculator, whoops, there we go, I get 27.5. So we're going to look at our data values. None of these data values are above 27.5. So we do not have an outlier that is above, so we do not have any outliers. Once we calculate and look for out, um, outliers, we can go ahead and draw our box and whisker plot. So my minimum value is at three, Q1 is at five, Q2 is at 10, Q3 is at 14, and our maximum is at 20. You want to draw a box from Q1 to Q3. Your median Q2 gets a vertical line. Connect them into the box and connect the max to the box. And that is a box and whisker plot. We learned about histograms. You can have a negatively skewed histogram and that will happen when your mean is more than the median. Remember I showed you how to draw a dinosaur? And so here's our beautiful dinosaur. The dinosaur's tail 
is on the left side of the histogram. So that means that this histogram is skewed left. Here we have a normally distributed histogram. So our mean is equal to our median. This is when we have a bell-shaped curve. And we can also have a positively skewed histogram. Here the mean will be less than the median. And so when you draw your dinosaur, your dinosaur's tail is on the right side of your graph. So that means that this is skewed right. Then we learned about two-way frequency tables. And so when I look at this two-way frequency table, we want to know how many students were surveyed. That's always going to be your sample size. Here our sample size is 1,825 students. We want to know how many students were freshmen. So we're going to go to freshmen and we're going to go to their total and that total is 525. How many students want a pizza party? So I'm gonna to go to the pizza party, I'm gonna to go to that total, and see that that is 495. Which option do seniors prefer? So I'm gonna to go to seniors, and I'm gonna see which one is has the most amount of votes, and that's 200 which is cookout. So seniors prefer a cookout. What percentage of students want an ice cream social? So I'm gonna go to ice cream social. That total is 580. And I'm gonna divide that by the total number of students that took the survey. So 580 divided by 1,825. When you multiply by 100, you get 31.78%. And then we want to know what percentage of freshmen want a cookout. So the total number of freshmen that want a cookout is 150 divided by the total number of freshmen, which is 525. So 150 divided by 525 multiplied by 100 is 28.57%. We also learned about scatter plots. So when you have a negative correlation, if you were to draw a line of best fit, it would have a negative slope. No correlation, mean the data is kind of all over the place. Nothing really is lining up to be either positive or negative. And then positive correlation, if we were to draw a line of best fit, we would have a positive slope. A line of best fit is a line that lies as close as possible to all the data points. The line of best fit should have many, as many data pairs as possible on the line. Of the points that are not on the line, approximately half should be below the line and half should be above the line. You can find the line of best fit um, using a calculator. The calculator that I like to use is Desmos. And so remember to do this in Desmos. In line one, when you open up Desmos, you wanna type in your table of values And then in line two, you want to type in the equation y1, the tilde symbol, m, x1, plus b. When you type in this equation in line two, after already typing in your table of values, it will give you your slope, your y-intercept, and your correlation coefficient.